Richard Williams very rarely gives interviews, but when he does decide to speak, he is not one to shy away from saying what he really thinks. Will Smith won an Oscar a year ago for playing him in the critically acclaimed film King Richard. It was a moment which was overshadowed when he stormed the stage and slapped Chris Rock for joking about his wife, Jada. Do you still stand by him? Yeah, I will stand by him. I think he's done the best what he needs to do. But I'll never be discussed with Mr. Smith. Matter of fact, I appreciate Mr. Smith. And you don't see any wrong in what he's done? I don't done. see nothing wrong with him. No one should criticize a person that on and on and on and on. So I think he do extraordinary well, and I really appreciate him very, very well, and I really welcome So do you think that ban should be lifted? Definitely should be, uh -huh. It should be just one day or no more than a week at the moment. Did you feel sorry for Chris Rock? No, I don't feel sorry for no one. If a person would do and hurt Venus Serena, I have to teach them, defend yourself. Even Venus Serena could do that. That's easy, man. What would you say to people who may say, Richard, supporting Will Smith is not the right thing to now do people, because what he did any was people, wrong? Any people gonna say good or bad about me in a way. I don't give a damn what no one say good or bad about me. I'm always good about myself. Uh, people are going to be criticized with black people around the whole damn world, even in London. Even when I'm in London, people could criticize me also. You, you've made it clear that you don't condone violence, but you understand why he did it. I don't do violence for no one. I'm very peaceful right now in my mind. I'm 81 years old. But when I'm about 51 years and younger, I can almost kill any damn one. So I think Mr. Smith done a great deal now. Now, organizers have said that for the first time in Oscars history, they're going to have a crisis team at the ceremony in order to prevent any similar incidents. Do you think that's an overreaction? I think it's very reaction. I think it'd be extreme reaction. Your girls, Venus and Serena. And if we may just reflect on their success together, they've won 14 Grand Slam doubles. They've not just pioneered, but they've dominated tennis for the last um, three decades. Was that always the vision that you had? Before they were born, I had to do a plan for Venus and Serena. So I don't need no one to help me except myself and their mom too. Together, I think they've won around 1,600 matches. <laughs> they won a great deal of their matches, a great deal. Uh -huh. Do you have a favorite moment? The junior matches, the greatest matches in the world. This is the mansion where Richard trained at Venus and Serena as teenagers. They've long left, but there are still so many memories inside there. This is where Richard trained your half-sisters, where a lot of things happened. What do you think when you come back here and you look at it? I always have to smile. There's a lot of great memories. I can just remember the different phases of the house, the different time periods. So it makes me smile. And then I, when I look at the reality of it, tears in my eyes. And just how historic is it? In, the legacy when we talk about the sisters and also your father? I mean, this place, I, the energy out here is just unreal. My dad loves this place, so it's just because of the, the energy out here. So it's, it's awesome. So I can't even put it into words, but this place, like I say, the energy out here is just unreal. And when you look at the condition of it at the moment, how Tears. worrying is that? Tears, it's sad, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So, you know, I can just, like I said, I can remember what it used to look like compared to what it looks like now. So it's just horrible. And can you tell us why it's in the condition that, that it's in at the moment? Uh, right now, we're still dealing with some legal issues with the house. So we're still hoping for, for the best. So I definitely want to make my dad happy when, it, when it comes to this house. And when you talk about dealing with things, is the plan to turn it into a museum or some sort of sacred ground my, when it comes to tennis? No, my idea is to be able to have the property back. It sits on a, a large piece of property here, which you can probably see, and uh, creating it more like a, an environment of what it, what it used to look like, but having more like model type homes on it and being able to have people air, to Airbnb it or sort of in a sense or rent it out in a sense where people can come out and sort of experience it the way that he intended it to be. That would be my wish, definitely. I've always felt like this is his legacy, this is who he is. So, and to be able to share that would, would be an honor. And this house is not just important in your father's journey, but also the, your half-sisters as well. Of course, I mean, this is where he trained them. This is where uh, they grew into the tennis players they became. 
So of course, memories, every, like I said, it's here, blood, sweat, and tears on this, on this land. I can remember cutting the yard out here two, three times a week. So call boxes down on the ground, I, people having to punch in, I just, yeah, of course, this place is just an important period. And can you tell us a little bit about it? Because from where we're standing, it just looks like any other house, but it's not. Because behind there's tennis courts and there's a lot going on, isn't there? Right, there are two clay courts, one hard court. Um, the lakes, there used to be three lakes out here. Uh, he covered one. Uh, just the property and everything is just totally different. Um, used to have the punching bag out there where we would train him in boxing. Uh, he always played golf out here. So we had the land designed a bit uh, for hitting balls and stuff. So it looked totally different at one point.